Hi, Victor Avalar here uh, with your video number two of the 10-minute insight series. Just a group of small videos to help you answer any questions you might have related to data centers. I uh, would love to hear what, what you think so far. If you could leave a comment below, that'd be great. If you remember the first video, we talked about how containment, air containment by itself, doesn't necessarily save energy. So in that video, I said you have to slow down the air conditioning fans, which will increase the delta T. And in this video, I'll explain why delta T is so important to saving energy. Now, one of the, uh, the ways that we wanted to do that is to get into an analogy. Like, if you want to cool your home, as you do at your data center, if you want to cool your home in the summer, what do you do? You turn on the air conditioner. Well, how does delta T relate to the heat gain or the heat conducted through the walls and ceilings? What does that mean for energy savings? So that's what we're going to get into today. And there's a common question that, that I hear often, uh, and that is, if I want to save energy in the summer, should I keep my home thermostat fixed at a comfortable temperature 24 hours a day, or should I vary it by keeping it high for 16 hours and low for 8 hours? To make this more realistic, let's, um, let's add some numbers to it. So let's say that I have, um, you know, the first approach is to fix the temperature. I'll fix it at 20C or 68F, 24 hours a day. And on the, uh, you know, on the variable uh, approach, I'm going to get a, a programmable thermostat, and I'm going to program it so that it's at, at 26C or 79F, 16 hours a day. And then from the hours of 3 p.m. to 11 p.m., I'm going to keep it uh, at 20C for 60 or 68 Fahrenheit, um, and, you know, those are the two approaches, and the question is, which approach saves me the most energy? So all else being equal, the approach that saves the most amount of energy is the one that has the least amount of heat gain through the walls and ceilings. And when I say all else being equal, I mean things like infiltration, which are the gaps around windows and doors that allow that hot air to get inside your house, and things like radiation, uh, through the windows you know, from the sun, right? If both of those types of heat gain are equal with both approaches, then the approach that saves the most amount of energy will be the one with the least amount of heat gain through the walls and ceilings. Now, it turns out there's a relatively simple formula to help explain this, and this is what I want to show you now. This equation is called Fourier's Law, and it calculates the amount of heat transfer through conduction. Conduction is the same thing that happens when you leave a metal spoon in a hot drink and then the spoon gets warmer over time. I think you all know what I mean there. Okay, so before we get in any further, let's first go through the variables of the equation and I'll kind of explain what it's supposed to do. Starting with Q, this is measured in watts or BTU per hour, uh, but you know I'm going to focus on the metric units so that um, you know the numbers that I put in later make sense because I use metric units for that. So this is the rate of heat conducted through the walls and ceilings of your house. The next one is uh, K, thermal conductivity. This is measured in watts per meter degree Celsius and it's the thermal conductivity of the wall and ceilings and this does not change for a given house. And this is important for the uh, comparison we're going to make between both approaches. All right, then we have A. This is measured in square meters, and it is the area uh, of the walls and ceilings in your house. And again, this does not change for a given house. And then uh, T1 minus T2, this is the delta T. This is what we're focusing in on in, in this video, and that is the temperature difference between the hot side of the wall and the cold side of the wall. And then finally, the wall thickness. And here I have a, a diagram of a wall, and as you can see, uh, we have A is the area of the wall, T1 is the warmer area, uh, I'm sorry, temperature, uh, T2 is the colder temperature, and this, this kind of, this slope here that you see is the delta T, and that is what drives the, uh, the heat transfer through the wall. So let's get into, um, now if I put some, some numbers into this, um, you can see that most of them don't change, right? So A stays the same, K stays the same, the delta T does change, but L, 
the thickness of the wall and ceiling, that, that stays the same. And by the way, I have a source down here for where I got this, this data. It helped really simplify uh, all of the different materials that you'd have in a ceiling or a wall and whatnot. So it simplifies it down to one number. Okay. Um, so the thermal conductivity wall thickness area, they, they remain constant. The only thing that changes is the temperature. The larger the delta T, the more heat gain through the walls of your home. So now uh, that we, we have an appreciation of this and we stick some constants in, we're missing the delta T, right? Well, to get those temperatures, realistic temperatures, it doesn't stay the same all day long, right? I uh, found some uh, temperature data for St. Louis on July 5th, 2014, for every hour of that day. And uh, so when I, when I take that in and I, I, um, I basically plot those outdoor temperatures, I can compare both approaches. And this is what you get when you compare both approaches. This is uh, how much heat energy I lose through the walls and ceilings in a day. And I graph the relationship between the heat gain here, or heat loss, however you want to say it, and versus the, the time, so 24 hours a day. What this tells us is that fixing your home temperature at a constant 20C, which is the red line, uh, or 68 Fahrenheit, results in almost twice as much heat gain, sorry, twice as much heat gain and therefore more air conditioning energy compared to the variable temperature approach. And now, why is this? Well, it's because you're keeping the temperature low all day results in a larger average delta T between the outdoor and indoor, right? Bigger delta T. Average delta T is larger means you have more heat gain. More heat gain means your air conditioner has to reject more heat from your home. So let's get back to why this is important to uh, data centers. The title of the video is Why Delta T is Important to Improving Data Center Efficiency. What I've just shown you is that uh, bigger delta T across the wall has a larger heat transfer, uh, more heat transfer through the wall. Uh, likewise, a smaller delta T has lower amount of heat transfer through the wall. This applies to the data center cooling units. Their cooling coils are like that wall. The bigger the delta T across that cooling coil, the more heat transfer that you have through the cooling coil. Um, but wait, remember, this is only conduction. The last I checked, you have conduction and convection at the cooling unit coil. Convection being that, that fan blowing air across the coil. Uh, and just for a recap, what's convection? Convection is kind of like when you have a hot bowl of soup and you're trying to cool it by blowing air across it. That's convection. So let's recap. Conduction doesn't require fan energy, and convection requires fan energy. So which would you have more of to cool your IT equipment? Obviously, you'd want to use more conduction. So you'd rather slow the fan down and remove the same amount of heat energy and this is what we showed you in the first video um, when I showed you this formula. So let's recap a bit on this particular formula. When you decrease the airflow, you increase the delta T across the cooling units, which can save a significant amount of energy due to the cube law. So what's the cube law? The cube law tells us that that fan power is proportional to the cube of the airflow. So if I slow down my fan by half, I use one-eighth the power, or an 87.5% reduction. In most cases, you're, you're better off slowing down all the cooling units rather than turning off a few of them. Okay, so at this point, hopefully everything makes sense and you've contained your hot or your cold aisle, and now you know that you need to slow down your cooling unit fans. But how much do you slow them down by? And herein lies the issue. What I said before is that you need to slow down the fan so that it approaches your IT uh, airflow requirement. But who here knows what their IT airflow requirement is? You really don't. Uh, and even if you did, you wouldn't know what the CFM is coming out of your cooling unit because all you do is change the speed of the fan. You don't know what the CFM is, the airflow is. It changes with every data center. So what do you do? So here I have a graph. and um, you know, first of all, if your cooling units have a constant speed fan, you won't be able to save energy unless you add a variable speed drive or you turn off some of the cooling units. But if you can uh, dial down the, uh, the, the airflow of the cooling units through the front panel, 
you're probably somewhere in this area. Okay, what this means is your fan speed is very high, your airflow is very high. And what does that mean? It means your delta T is very low. Your cooling unit delta T is very low. So one approach to solving this problem is to slowly decrease your airflow in your cooling unit so that your delta T starts going up. And as you slowly decrease your fan speeds, you will start seeing your, um, your delta T's increasing. And right around here, you're going to notice your IT inlet temps. You have to monitor your IT inlet temps here. The, the purpose of this exercise is to get to the point where your, uh, your uh, cooling unit fans are dialed in so that they're saving energy, but they're not so slow that you're starving your IT equipment and then your IT inlet temperatures start going up. So that's, that's key. And it, it's a pretty straightforward uh, exercise if you're monitoring the, uh, the, IT, the temperature inlets of your IT equipment. Well, that's it for now. Next month, we'll cover a different topic. And do me a favor. If you have a question that you think we can answer in a simple way in one of these videos, please leave a comment below. And also, if you find this, uh, these videos helpful, please give us a like. We'll see you next time.